y'all this is Chris um, here for another daily gab today is Monday August 13th 2018 and this would be episode number 12 um, trying out the video with the same microphone again uh, trying to test out to make sure it's gonna work right uh, hopefully it does or I'm gonna have to do another daily gab live tonight but um, so yeah I just thought well what the heck I'll give it a try so today is Monday uh, something interesting today I can see blue sky I don't see smoke uh, we do have a little bit of a breeze which I'm sure is helping to move that smoke around and keep it out of here but um, but it's kind of cool we actually have blue sky which is a little odd considering the past couple weeks have been nothing but you know smoky skies um, so you know I I, I, I talked yeah I did a quick gab yesterday and um and it was really quick and i apologize it's because i screwed up uh well my equipment screwed up but i screwed up by not making sure the equipment was working correctly so i'll take the blame um and then i did a live and i did that live for i don't know we were there for about an hour or so and i uh, had somebody come on and tell me not to get so worked up over something i was talking about and it's not that i get worked up i get animated i guess is what we'll call it i i, I I kind of take this stuff to heart, I guess, and so, um, but I'm going to talk about that subject today, and that subject, and it's only because of something that happened this morning, and with school starting tomorrow, it made it a little bit more of an, an interesting deal for me, and it's pedestrians, and what their rights are. So, today we're going to do Civics 101, I guess, so we will call it that. Or how to legally and properly cross the street. How about that? I don't know. Um, so here's basically it. People in general do not know the vehicle code for pedestrians. And not that I expect everyone to go out and grab a copy of the vehicle code and start reading it. But it wouldn't hurt to know it. To at least know a little bit. Um, so I mean there's things you have to think about as a pedestrian. Okay. You've got, well, sidewalks, and then you've got roads without sidewalks, and then you've got crossings. Marked crosswalks and unmarked crosswalks. Okay, so when it comes to just general walking down the street, obviously if you're on a sidewalk, you're probably in pretty good shape. Um, if you're walking down a road like my road, for instance, that doesn't have a sidewalk, well, what I do is I walk between the edge of the pavement and the fog line that's what the white line is called it's called a fog line and it's there and painted the way it's painted so that during foggy conditions rainy conditions your headlights will still hit it or during the day it's still bright enough that you would notice the marking so that you wouldn't go off the road right so I walk in between that and what they call the EP or edge of pavement um, now when I get to a case where I don't have that choice then I walk right on the edge of the road but then if I see a car coming at me, then I get off the road and kind of walk through the gravel or whatever, or dirt, whatever's there. Now here's the one thing about walking. You should walk against traffic. Um, now some people say, no, you walk with traffic. No, I think you should always walk against traffic. Now I'm not sure what the quote unquote rule is on that, but I say walk against traffic. I've had occasions where I've almost been hit because I was walking with traffic on the side of the road with no sidewalk between the fog line and the EP and almost got hit. So I say walk against traffic. That way you have a better chance of seeing what's coming at you. Now when you get to crosswalks, crosswalks are interesting. Because an unmarked crosswalk, which is basically a crosswalk in a sense where an intersection is of say a small residential street two small residential streets come together so let's just take um trying to think of a good a good uh, option to use that most people would know but i just can't think of one off the top of my head but you come to you know what's kind of the main road through a subdivision and then one of the little side streets and you're crossing the side street so you're walking parallel with the main road you're going to cross the side street or you're walking i'm going to cross the main road whichever the case but there's no crosswalks marked so what do you do in that case well you legally can cross 
but what you need to make sure is is that when you get to that intersection you don't just walk off under the intersection or running across it or whatever without looking stop make sure it's safe to cross and then just cross just take a straight line typically from where they've got the low spot in the sidewalk and that's the ADA stuff or they've got like the truncated domes which is the yellow squares all the little bumps in it and you walk from you know and they sometimes they have them a little cut with grooves there's all kinds of ways then you just cross across there and you're fine now let's say you're at a marked crosswalk so you've got the two yellow lines that mark crosswalk maybe it's got the big bold lines across the center same thing now most marked crosswalks will have a crosswalk signal okay so it's basically like your red light green light okay just like a car has a red light green light yellow light right so it's yours your signal and in a sense i guess you could say they have a red green, yellow and green so here's how those work and if you look at the signage it's at most crosswalks like the new ones they put in at franklin in 99 bridge in 99 lincoln in 99 then you'll see what i'm talking about so you walk up there's a button you push the button now they've got the buttons that talk they say wait uh, and they make other noises so you push the button you wait for across the way you're going to see the the box is about yay big it's got a red hand in it right as soon as that red hand goes away and you see the little dude come up who's got the walk symbol he's got like his legs moving like this like it's time to walk that's when you actually cross the street now if you're crossing the street in that case you are doing it properly if somebody comes through that intersection and, and hits you what's their fault they come through that intersection and well they still they I mean they've done something wrong and typically they're running a red light too so if you follow that across and you start say you get about halfway and all of a sudden the hand pops back up and it starts counting down numbers from 15 to 0 what that number is telling you is you have 15 seconds to complete your crossing to get to the other side not you have 15 seconds if you've just gotten up to the crosswalk to try and bebop across there as fast as you can you still are not supposed to cross unless the little walking dude is there right and I think I've got a picture I'll try and put up you know up here somewhere on one side or the other I'll stick it somewhere I don't know um, but um, I mean it's pretty it's pretty straightforward I think so if you're using that crosswalk properly you should never get hurt unless you know somebody's an idiot and they run a red light or which happens because people are stupid not paying attention they're texting they're looking at their phones or messing with their kids or messing with the dog they're trying to eat whatever the case it happens but in 99.9% .9 of the cases you are going to be perfectly fine because you cross properly now if let's say you decide well screw that symbol I don't need to know that I'm just gonna go ahead and cross because it looks like it's clear okay let's say it looks clear but let's say there's cars in a turn lane and you can't see past those cars in that turn lane and there's a car sitting there that maybe they're over on the side of the road and they just pull away as you start to cross you can't see them and all of a sudden they're they're booking it because they, they're running behind and they don't see you and they hit you guess what it's not their fault it's your fault because they have a green light so they're crossing I mean they're going like they're supposed to they're they're not breaking the law you are because you are crossing on the red hand not on a walk signal I, I mean I don't understand why you know parents are not teaching their kids this stuff I want to know why we're not teaching it to kindergartners then we're teaching it to third graders and then maybe sixth graders and to be honest with you, you probably need to teach it in high school too because these kids are not much smarter than a kindergartner in some cases there should be classes in school or something that teaches this kind of stuff I'd love to see the police department put a program together in conjunction with like the CHP and Caltrans to come into schools and teach this program and if they need somebody to help I volunteer I will help do it I don't mind um, you know and I think this is an even bigger deal to me because school starting tomorrow and so you're gonna have more and more kids out walking uh, the weather's still nice enough in the mornings and the afternoons that they can walk uh, and some parents can't take time off to take them back and forth to school so you have to keep that in mind and sometimes a bus is not available so I think it's an important thing for people to realize um, now yesterday or well this morning we're out driving this guy just barrels off across in front of us right and he's in the middle of the inner he's in the middle of the road it's, there's no crosswalk well I mean not where he was crossing 
If we would have hit him, that would have been his fault. He does not have the right of way in that case. Just because I can see him and could probably stop does not mean he has the right of way and I have to stop. That means I have the right of way on that road, not him. Um, now, the other thing that gets me is the people who will just say, oh, the heck with it, I'm just going to go ahead and cross. And they'll cross in the middle of the street because they're too lazy to walk another 50 feet to go to the crosswalk and do it properly. I mean, I, I walk a lot and I have many opportunities where I can just cross wherever I feel like, but I try to use a crosswalk every time. Now, I'll admit it, I've had cases where I haven't used a crosswalk because it just happened to work out. And I can see that there's no traffic coming at me from either direction. It's clear, it's safe for me to cross, and I'll just run across real quick. Well, not run, but you know what I mean. But, you know, and in most cases, if you're standing there waiting to cross at a marked or unmarked crosswalk, most drivers will stop so that that way they can hold the traffic's behind them. And then, uh, and They see as people coming in the opposite direction see it sometimes they'll stop too they start to see you walking across because the other car stopped they will stop for you if people are courteous enough to stop that's fine me personally I don't do that if people look like they're gonna slow down and stop I'm saying oh no please go ahead just let them go until it's clear so I can cross because if I'm crossing and something happens it can still be my fault and I don't want to take that chance and I can still get hurt or killed don't want to take that chance either so, you know, it's one of those things where, yes, I think last night, probably in my life, maybe I got a little worked up about some of this stuff, but it's just that, you know, I guess I'm just one of those people It's like, look, you know, you do, you do things right. I mean, if, if the law states you're not supposed to cross the middle of the street, then don't cross the middle of the damn street. Use a crosswalk. It's pretty simple. Um... You know, to me, it doesn't matter what the law is. You break a law, you break a law. It doesn't matter how minuscule the law is. It's just like jaywalking. That's a very small, minuscule law. But, you know, people people break that law every day. And unfortunately, we don't have enough officers on the street with enough time to hit all those people and say, hey, you know, I mean, I think, uh, you know, how like with kids get caught riding without a helmet or something like that on a bicycle or a skateboard, they have to go to, they have to, go to court. Uh, my kid got caught one time when he was younger. We had to go to sit in front of a judge. Uh, we had to have an officer tell us all the stuff, you know, and go over everything as to why they can't ride without a helmet. And we had to be there with them. And that was in lieu of paying the fine. You know, you had to do this kind of like a like like traffic or like uh, you know, like if you get a speeding ticket for the fourteenth time, you had to go to traffic school or whatever. Um, and it was really good. I mean, the kids were a little nervous. You could tell kids were scared. And uh, because they didn't know what was going to happen. They thought they might be arrested. Which, okay, if you got to put a little fear in a kid because of that, put a little fear in them. If it saves their life, who cares? Um, and I think that's something that should happen now with pedestrians and bicyclists. I don't care if you're an adult or if you're a child. If you do something stupid, you should get busted and you should go to traffic court. And you got two options. Go through this thing with a judge and an officer and learn from it or pay the fine and if you ain't got the money to pay the fine then fine you do 30 days in jail do do 30 days sitting in county lockup you won't like it so maybe you'll think twice i think that should happen with jaywalkers a cop sees somebody jaywalking stop give them a damn ticket send them to court otherwise let them pay the fine and let them go to jail because the only way we're going to get people to understand is to, it's kind of like with Yuba City High School. A couple of years ago, it's been more than a couple, but a few years ago, two motorcycle officers would sit in the parking lot right next to the baseball field. They would come out and write tickets to these kids who were using the crosswalk improperly. They were crossing when they weren't supposed to, uh, crossing against the uh, you know when they shouldn't be crossing because it's a green light in the the lane that they're crossing and all kinds of stuff because they thought well well we're okay we can do what we want well the stop the cops started giving them tickets and they started getting fines and the parents were just bent out of shape boy the parents were raising hell the administrators were a little upset the district was a little upset and it's like you know what screw all of you who cares if your kids dead what are you gonna do then so, I had some parents and kids talking to me one day about it, and they were all upset, and I'm like, well, you guys are stupid. And they were like, what? I'm like, you, as the parent, are stupid, and so is your child. 
because you don't know how to properly cross the street without you know taking a chance of getting yourself killed or getting a ticket. I said, so you deserve your ticket and for your stupid, you should have got a second ticket for stupidity. And I had a couple parents who were ready to take me out back and kick my butt for it because I was calling them and their kids stupid. But hey, you know what? I You know, you call a spade a spade. It's a simple. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things where, look, you know, and nowadays with the way the world is, is everybody's like, oh, well, little Johnny didn't know. Ignorance of the law does not mean you get to break the law, okay? Well, little Johnny didn't know. Well, maybe little Johnny's mom and dad are stupid and didn't teach him properly. When my kids were little, I took them to an intersection and walked through the process with them of how to cross the street properly so they didn't get killed. Because I never know. I mean, it's like, you know, one summer afternoon, my kid goes, Hey, Dad, I'm going to go here. Well, he's going to go to a friend's house down the street. Well, he may have to cross a couple of intersections. Would I rather he cross those intersections and just take his chances or know how to cross those intersections properly and then, you know, and that way he grows up to be who he is today? So, I mean, people get a, get a, can get upset with me about it if they want because I'm telling them they're stupid. I don't really care. Uh, but it is something that needs to be handled. Um, and I think the next one we'll probably talk about will be bicyclists. Because bicyclists don't have the right of way all the time either. Matter of fact, bicyclists in this community are pretty stupid. They don't know the law. And I'll give you a quick little hint. If you're on a bicycle, you ride with traffic, not against it. And you are required by law to stop at all stop signs, red lights, everything. You don't get to just blow through them because you're on a bicycle. You don't get to just whip around the corner because you're on a bicycle. You're supposed to stop and then turn right. It's, you know, you're, you're, I mean, obviously cars do California stops all the time, but, um, you know, I mean, it, but, I, and I guess when it comes to being a pedestrian, I, I am a firm believer in 3,500 pound car always has the right of way. Because if a 3,500 pound car hits me, that 3,500 pound car will survive. And so will the people in the car probably. I may not. So that's just something to keep in mind is, you know, really it's, it's one of those things of, you know, protect yourselves, protect your kids, um, you know, and, uh, and hopefully everybody will have a good day and everybody will get home and they'll be home from school or whatever the case. So just don't be stupid, protect yourself and make sure you pay attention to what the hell you're doing. So that's one of the things that I got pretty fired up about last night. I also got fired up about, um, or animated as I like to call it, about local government. Um, one of the things that I think we really need to see is a change in how local government is run. Um, I'm going to take the city as a for instance right now. We've got three city council positions coming up, right? When those three people get in place, what I'd like to see them do is go and grab every single at-will position in the city, bring all those people to the, to the city council chambers, and ask them the first question, what have you done for the people lately? Which they should be able to say nothing, because if they say anything else, they're probably lying to you. And then tell every one of those people, well, thank you for your service. You can pick your, your last check will be mailed to you in a week. Have a nice day and then fire every single damn one of them. That's department heads, managers, whatever. If they're at will, fire them. And then go get people that actually do give a damn about this community and not their own paycheck and not their retirement and not their benefits and taking eight hours to do a one hour job and all that kind of stuff. Find people in there who give a damn and want to do what's right for the people, which in turn will be right for them as well. And, uh, I mean, I know it's never going to happen. I know the city council would never do anything like that. Because, to be honest with you, I don't think any of them would have the balls to do it. Um, you know, and I think the same thing needs to be done at the county level as well. And then some reevaluation needs to be done by the city based on how they handled the recology pro uh, process. They went to staff, which is basically, okay, so in a hierarchy of local government... You've got like city council, and then you'll have like city manager, then you'll have the department heads over the various departments, and then the managers are under that. So in other words, way too many people who wait to wait make way too damn much money. And then under that you'll have staff. Now here's the thing with staff. If you have a department that could that would typically have a staff of say 20, 
they're going to hire 40. Because if they hire 20, then 20 of them will have to actually work. If they hire 40, then they can milk those jobs a little bit more and make them take eight hours, right? So that is a problem. And I only say this because I worked in local government and I watched it myself. I am not that kind of person. If somebody came to me and said, hey, I need this done by tomorrow morning, it's going to be done by the afternoon before the end of the day. Because I'm not a procrastinator. I want to get it done. Because my job is to do what I can to help those people who are residents. And if that means getting a job done that's just an internal deal, then that's my job, right? So we've got way too many people in government who like to take eight hours, do a one hour job because of the typical government workers. They like to milk it because all they're there for is to get paid, get benefits, and get a retirement. That's all they care about. They're not there to do anything. They don't give a damn about you, me, or anybody else in this community. Not, not all of them are that way, but we do have some. And those people need to be weeded out and gotten rid of. I don't give a damn about the unions. They need to be weeded out and gotten rid of. Um, and and you know, the other thing, too, is when you look at like department heads and managers and all that kind of those people don't do anything. They just sit on their ass, yell at people, and take all the credit for everything that staff does. So then you look at this thing with Recology and the city council. They went out to staff. Staff made a recommendation of, hey, we should just stick with Recology. That wasn't good enough for our city council. So what did they do? They went out and hired a, con a consultant to tell them the exact same damn thing. They went out and spent about $160,000 to do the exact same thing. So that's $160,000 of taxpayer money that could be used for something else and something more important than to go out and let a consultant tell you the same thing that your staff just told you. So something I think needs to happen is a choice needs to be made. You can have column A or column B. Column A is, is you keep staff on, which in the long run will cost you a lot more money. Or in column B, you can use consultants. You can't have both. There is no mixing. You have one or the other. So if you typically would have a staff of 10, let's cut your staff down to about three and then let consultants do all the work. Now here's the advantage to consultants. You pay them to do a job, probably too much, but you pay them to do a job and then you're done. You don't worry about benefits, you don't worry about retirement, you don't worry about any of those after things, none of that junk. Or unions or anything like that. Um, but you end up paying them more typically because, well you pay them a lot more for the initial job because they're going to overcharge you, that's what consultants do. But then with staff, you're going to get people that are a little bit more invested in doing the job right and you would think in most cases that doesn't always happen but you would think you get people who are more invested in doing the job uh, because it's their butt that's on the line but then here's the other thing you're paying them an exorbitant wage you're paying them benefits and you're paying for their retirement so in the long run you're losing money on worthless staff that are sitting around doing nothing now that doesn't apply to everybody in government we we know that it doesn't apply to it's just like the department heads on it doesn't apply to every department head. It doesn't apply to every elected, but it reply, but it applies to the majority. And so the majority needs to be weeded out, gotten rid of, and replaced with people who actually give a damn and they want to do the job, do it as efficiently as possible, for the least amount of money as possible, get it done right, and do something good for the people. Which is an odd concept, I know, but that's what we need to find. We need to find those kind of people gotta check my time here okay um, so that was another thing I got into last night and I, I kind of used some examples of a couple things like the city wanted to do their 1% sales tax it's stupid why would you do it as a tax because as soon as you approach it as a tax that's going to turn people off because they hate the word tax right here's the other side that turns people off when you approach it as a tax, you tell people, oh, well, it's going into public safety and fire. Bullshit. If they ever tell you that, it's a lie. Because a tax is not going to go there. A tax is going to go into the general fund, and they're going to use it for whatever they want, typically to give themselves raises. Example, city of Marysville just a couple years ago. 1% sales tax, everybody get a raise. Now, if they came to you and said it's an assessment, assessments are handled differently. 
Um, and one day I'll get into the county service area thing and kind of explain how an assessment works because that's where they work. I used to do county service areas. That's a whole different animal. But an assessment is something that, yes, is paid through your tax bill, but it's not a tax. But that assessment is paid to go into a specific fund for a specific service and can be used for nothing other than that specific service unless you got some dirtbag politicians that are going to try and finagle it and make it work, which does happen. I've had public works directors come to me and want my money out of my CSAs to handle some problem they have because they were too stupid to do their job, and I had to fight it. And legally, they can't do it because the CSA money is for the CSA. I had one CSA they tried to do that with, and I had the CSA go and get an attorney, and they went after the county for it because they were trying to do that. So it's, it's wrong, and that's another problem that we have. We have too many people in government who want to do things wrong, and then when they get caught and they get busted, they get all upset, and then they start hiding stuff, i.e. the grand jury report which I've been given some more information about why that grand jury report was sequestered, such as um, spe some, some specific public people uh, getting information from someone who worked in the DA's office and using that information against somebody else, which is highly illegal, and it's confidential information they shouldn't have. And these people have been named in this grand jury report, too. So maybe that's why we don't hear from them much anymore, because they know they've gotten their their pee, pee slapped, and now, you know, we, we're just not going to hear from them anymore. Which is a good thing, because if it silences these certain people, that's a good thing. But, um, you know, so it'll definitely be interesting if this grand jury report comes out, or if it somehow or another makes its way into my hands... Yuba Sutter Political Spotlight's hands, Lou Benninger's hands, somebody's hands. We need to get our hands on it and see what's in there. Um, there's got to be some way to get it, and I'm hoping we can. Because you guys, as the public, have a right to know what's going on. So, um, But I think that's about it for me. I've only got a couple minutes here. Plus, i got to go in and help my wife get ready for dinner because we're eating a little early. She's got a meeting to go to in a little bit, and we're going we're gonna to eat a little early and she makes killer homemade tacos, and that's what we're having, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, appreciate everybody who watches the, the Gab here. Um, please do me a favor. Like this video, uh, comment, and hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell if you so please. Um, don't forget that we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, It's You, The City, and More, and One Eye Blind Media. And we're, we'd be happy to have you, you know, give us a like, give us a follow, give us a comment, whatever the case. Uh, especially here on YouTube, we really want to have, uh, we really want to build our YouTube channel up so that we can get more information out to the folks. And we can keep everyone more informed. So again, thank you very much. Again, I'm Chris. I appreciate everybody who came on today and checked this out. Like I said, don't forget to give it a good old thumbs up. And I will talk to you guys next time.